Hey Canucks fans, and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary. The losing streak is over, for now, as the Canucks soundly defeated the Buffalo Sabres tonight, 5-2. And on a night where the team honored the West Coast Express of Todd Bertuzzi, Marcus Naslin, and Brendan Morrison, it seemed appropriate that this game was relatively loose, much like the West Coast Express played. There were many offensive chances, there were many defensive breakdowns, and overall, it made for a very entertaining game. Let's get to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Redeem Verbata was good. He scored three goals for a hat trick, his sixth of his career, and he got all three of his goals by going to the same place, that is in the slot right between the face-off circles. And if you get a chance to check out the highlight of his third goal, notice how he deftly moves the broken stick out of his way, basically removing it from the place where the puck's gonna go in like one second later. And sure enough, he rifles the puck past goaltender Linus Allmark. And speaking of Linus Allmark, I tweeted that he had such a bad game, he didn't look good. In fact, he looked sick, more like Sinus Illmark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also good with the Vancouver Canucks fans, who this time actually chucked their hats onto the ice, unlike last time when Daniel Sedin scored his hat trick and only two hats made it onto the ice surface. One hat that didn't make it onto the ice surface was mine, because my son Sean was wearing it, he was sitting in section 314, and in his words, he had no chance of throwing it over the netting that was behind the net. Not gonna lie, I'm kinda grateful he didn't chuck my hat after I just got it last week. And you may be wondering why was Canuck underscore Sean sitting in section 314, why I was with my godson Daniel in section 304. It's because of the generosity of my fellow Van City Buzz writer, Ian Lusher. Thanks a lot for the tickets tonight, bro. But Ian Lusher, you are good. Also good was Ryan Miller. He made 32 saves on the night. He looked solid and in control the whole time. And the two goals that beat him, he didn't really have much of a chance. One of them was by three foot seven Brian Gianta knocking out of the air. And the other was a quick shot from the slot from Sam Reinhardt. It was good to see Miller with such a solid performance against one of his former teams. Also good, the Canucks special teams. They went one for six on the power play. I guess it could be a bit better. And they killed off all three of Buffalo's power play opportunities. That means a combined special teams percentage, not scientific, of 117%. The fourth line was excellent tonight. Adam Cracknell, Brandon Pruss, and Derek Dorsett combined for five points. I'd take five points from that line in a week, let alone one game. And with Brandon Pruss' second period goal, his first as a Canuck, he showed that he was very skilled with his stick in two consecutive games. And despite not registering any points once again, I thought Bo Horvat had a very solid game. He skated well, he checked well, and he made some really good passes to line mate Sven Berchi. It's not his fault that Sven Berchi doesn't have any finish. However, it was good to see the line skating and creating chances in the offensive zone. A couple bad things. Didn't really like the Canucks start to this game. They seemed a little tentative, and I was hoping that we weren't gonna see a replay of the Boston game. Didn't help that three foot seven Brian Gionta scored just seven minutes into the game, but we all breathed a collective sigh of relief when Verbata scored just a minute and a half later. Also bad was Alex Burrell's discipline, or lack thereof, when he took that double minor for high sticking Josh Georges just one second after the Canucks went on the power play. Way to wreck those power play stats, Burrells. And if I had to pick out one ugly thing, and really, in a 5-2 win, I'm kind of nitpicking, it would be some of the turnovers that the Canucks had. Both of the Sabres goals were caused by the Canucks D-men turning the puck over. Barkowski on the first one, Hatmuse on the second one. And Barkowski also made a horrible giveaway in the third period, leading to a breakaway, which Ryan Miller stopped. And Sven Berchi, just a few minutes in, made a horrible drop pass in his own zone, leading directly to a good Sabre scoring chance. Memo to Sven Berchi. The only Canucks that are allowed to do drop passes are the Sedins, and only when they're on the power play. Let's get to Canucks in a word, where you send in your thoughts or feelings on the Canucks or the Canucks game using just one word. Finally, hat trick, relief, cohesion. I like that one. Redemption. I have a feeling I'm gonna get a lot of these redeem verbata puns tonight. Verbat hats. Verb hat trick. Verbat trick. Excellent. Very clever, Mike. Tank, tank, tankity, tank, 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 tankity, tank. Chris used this on our C4 podcast earlier today, and obviously he's still using it tonight. Woohoo! Hats. Verbatarific. Diamond. Not sure what that means. Tankless. Verhada. Redemption. Sweetness. Verbhada. Verbata Express. Well, those were a lot less depressing than last time. Overall, tonight was a great night at the arena. Got to hang out with my buddy Brandon at the secondary intermission. He's B. Dozen Furtado, one of my most loyal viewers at the CCCs. And I got to introduce Brandon to the man, the myth, the legend of Tanbeer. Sadly, I could not coerce Tanbeer to proclaim, I want a cup. Next up for the Canucks, they host Alain Vigneault and the New York Rangers on Wednesday night. It would be great to see the Canucks get on a little bit of a roll before they head out on the road once again at the end of the week. I invite you to follow me on Twitter at Canuck Clay and subscribe to this YouTube channel. 
Thanks for watching and God bless. Go Canucks go.